Hello and welcome back to Mossy Bottom. It's now mid-October, so it's getting a bit cold here in the west of Ireland, but today at least we're not forecast to have any rain, so I've decided to get out and make something. And I wonder how many of you have heard of a chicken tractor. They're becoming more popular now. There's loads of videos on YouTube about them. The concept's pretty straightforward. It's an enclosure, which you keep your chickens in, on wheels and you move it every day or two onto a fresh patch of grass so the chickens can eat that grass down uh, and turn it into manure. And it's a really sustainable way to keep chickens because it prevents them destroying the, the pasture entirely and turning it into mud. And for the last two years now, I've been using exactly the same system, but with rabbits. And this is what I call my rabbit tractor. It's got two pneumatic wheelbarrow wheels at the back um, an outdoor eating area, as you can see, with uh, wire mesh underneath to prevent burrowing, either in or out, and an enclosed above ground um, sleeping area, uh, which I fill with straw to keep them safe and warm overnight. And my rabbits live here 12 months of the year, so there's no need for a separate hutch. And the best thing is how incredibly easy this thing is to move. I made the first one of these when getting my first two rabbits a few years ago. And I've since made another three because I love the design so much. Why do I keep rabbits? I know there'll be loads of you out there asking that. Well, aside from the fact I get the pleasure of their company, and that really does mean a lot to me, I keep them to mow the grass. That's their function here. Particularly between my rows of vegetables in the summertime. And while they're doing it, of course, they're depositing poop back into the soil. So they're saving me the effort of having to get a lawnmower out and turning that grass into something that enriches the soil where my vegetables grow. Really important job. And this enclosure would also be perfect for guinea pigs um, or even poultry if you made it a bit bigger and added a few features like a roosting bar. And in this video, I'm gonna make a brand new one of these from start to finish so you can see the entire build. First though, my new rabbit tractor has been paid for by Skillshare, who generously sponsored this video. And pretty much everything I've achieved here at Mossy Bottom is a direct result of self-learning. And as we all know, YouTube is a great resource for that, but Skillshare, in my view, and I use it regularly, is even better because it's set up with the intention of teaching in a structured format with the support of a community. There are video courses covering just about every subject you can imagine, including this fantastic traditional woodworking course, which took me right back to my cabinet making days as a teenager. And this course, Gardening 101, a guide for growing and caring for plants by Geraldine Lavin, who's a herbalist and fellow farmer. And it covers just about everything from propagation to planning, planting and harvesting. I know loads of you out there enjoy my gardening videos. It's a big part of my life, growing my own food and herbs. Um, and if that's something that interests you too, and you want to learn more about it, then this video is a really great place to start. Finally, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only about $10 a month. So if you're interested in learning some new skills, I think it's well worth a look. But now I've got a rabbit tractor to build. So this little one is gonna to have to go back inside, unfortunately. I'm gonna talk you through everything that you'll need to make it as we go. So let's get started. So the first thing worth saying is that I don't have a workshop. So I'm gonna be making the entire tractor outside. And of course that presents a few challenges, but nothing that can't be overcome with a bit of ingenuity. However, if you have a nice cozy workshop with all your tools set up on workbenches, then you're already at an advantage to me. The first thing we're gonna do is build the frame. And for this, I'm using 45 millimeter by 35 millimeter, two inch by one inch and a half treated timber, which for me comes in 4.8 meter lengths, about 16 foot. And in total, you're gonna to need about five lengths for this build. And I'm cutting four pieces, 
each 135 centimeters long. And now four more pieces, each 80 centimeters long. And I'll be using quite a few types of screw for this build, um, but they're all standard chipboard screws. For this part of the frame, I'm using the really big 100 millimeter screws to make it nice and strong. So I've just assembled two rectangles from the pieces I cut with the shorter lengths on the inside, as you can see. And at this point, I noticed my trestle tables are on really uneven ground. So I'm just using my spirit level here to square them up. And now I'm cutting six upright pieces, each 68 centimeters long. The reason I need six and not four will become evident very soon. Slightly smaller screws now, these are 80 millimeter, which I'll use for the rest of the frame. And you can see I've used four of the uprights to assemble the two rectangles together and make a cube. You've probably noticed I'm using two drills so I can pilot hole every screw. If you don't do that, then the timber will often split, especially with uh, holes near the end. It's also a lot easier to drill through a knot than it is to directly screw through one. So I'm attaching the final two uprights now to form the hutch area of the rabbit tractor. These are 41.5 centimeters from the nearest edge. And if that sounds like a funny number, there is a reason for it, which will become evident too. And now I'm cutting the crossbars, which will form the bottom of the hutch, which I'm going to place 30 centimeters from the top. And I've based the dimensions of the hutch area on the width of the boards, which I'm going to be using to enclose it later on, each of which is about 15 centimeters or six inches wide. More on that later though. And now for the front bar, again, 80 centimeters long. Now 
So the next piece of timber I'm using is 45 millimeters by 45 millimeters or two inch square. So it's a bit thicker than the other timber. And you'll only need about one length of that for the whole tractor. And I'm using it for the handles and the wheels to give a bit of extra strength in those areas that most need it. I'm measuring down 25 centimeters for the handle placement. And I'm now cutting two support bars with mitered edges, each at 45 degrees, which will fit perfectly into that 90 degree space. And if you only buy two tools, then a miter saw and a cordless drill are definitely the most important. Without these bars, the handles simply wouldn't take the strain of being lifted hundreds of times. So it's really important to put them on. And finally, a crossbar to stop the handles from wobbling from side to side. Again, 80 centimetres long to fill that space. So I'm now cutting the pieces to support the wheels at the back. And we have four pieces for this, two for the wheels, each 35 centimetres long, and two more support bars, just like for the handles. And one thing that's really important with the wheels is to position them so that when the tractor is flat against the ground, the bottom of the wheels also touches the ground without creating a gap. And in the case of my wheelbarrow wheels, which are about 10 inches, that means attaching the piece of timber 11.5 centimeters up. But you'll need to figure that out for yourself based on the size of the wheels that you buy. Again, I'm mitering the edges of the support bars to 45 degrees on both ends so it fits in there perfectly. and fitting a crossbar to keep them stable. Next, we have a fairly technical part of the build. So I'm back using the lighter timber again and cutting two small pieces, each 11.5 centimeters long. And I'm now marking the angle that the roof is gonna form so I can cut the timber to match that angle, as you can see.
Now I'm marking a longer piece of timber in the same way so I can cut it to exactly fit that space. And this is in order to create an angled roof without which rainwater would build up and leak in. You can see I've exactly cut both sides to fit the space. One of my main considerations with building animal enclosures is making them as predator proof as I can. We don't have bears or wolves here in Ireland, but we do have foxes and mink. And if there are any small gaps where you've not cut the timber correctly, then they may exploit that. I'm now working on the main door to the outside area. And you do need a tiny gap around the edge so it doesn't stick. Uh, I aim for a couple of millimeters on each side. And now I'm cutting two small pieces with mitered edges again at 45 degrees for the door to rest on when it's closed. All will become clear in a moment. Two butt hinges, large. I don't know why I sounded so serious when announcing those butt hinges, but yes, two large butt hinges to support the other side. Personally, I never use the screws provided with hinges, latches, or any other ironmongery because the screw heads are always so soft. Chipboard screws are infinitely stronger and easier to take in and out if you need to. So now I'm going to make the hinged roof for the indoor hutch area. 
And I'm using slightly smaller timber for this. It's 20 millimeter by 50 millimeter or one inch by two inch. You'll only need about half a length of that. In terms of lengths, just measure and match the framework of the roof onto which it will sit. That was definitely a bit less serious, wasn't it? <laughs> and you can get butt hinges and all manner of hinges in uh, all different sizes from builder suppliers and DIY stores. And I'm now using a multi-tool to rebate the hinges in order to not leave any gaps when the roof is closed. Just like you'd see if someone was fitting a door onto a house. This is five millimeter plywood. It's probably stronger than it looks. And I'm using an old offcut from the cabin build to cover the underside of the roof to the hutch. and using tiny 16 millimeter screws to secure it. Now for the tricky part, attaching the hinges to the roof. And you'll notice I've jammed scrap pieces of plywood between the framework and the roof. That's just to create a small gap so the hinge functions properly and isn't too tight. I must admit I was very tempted to ask the person behind the camera for a hand at that point, but somehow I resisted. Now I'm going to fit the boards around the hutch area. As I mentioned earlier, these are 150 millimeters by 25 millimeters, or six inches by one inch thick. And you'll need two 4.8 meter lengths. And the gaps that we've created should almost exactly fit two pieces at the back and sides, three at the front and three at the bottom, as you'll see. Hence why we went for that funny 41.5 centimetre measurement earlier. It's much easier, I find, to overcut by about a millimetre and hammer into place using a mallet than it is to undercut, simply because the framework then holds the timber in place while you screw it together. And of course, that way there are no gaps whatsoever.
Measure the spaces to make sure each piece fits exactly. You may have noticed in commercial rabbit hutches or chicken enclosures, they use much thinner wood, plywood, hardboard, or thin fencing panels. But I've learned from experience that one inch boards are worth the extra cost and it's not significant for a number of reasons. Firstly, they're almost impossible for most predators to dig through, being so strong. Secondly, they don't rot or warp significantly when they get wet. And one thing you can guarantee with animal hutches is that there'll be a lot of moisture in there. So yes, it's a little bit pricier, but worth every penny if you want to make something that will last for 10 years or more and keep your animals safe. Here you can see I've marked the angle of the roof against this top board which I've cut and now I'm using my planer to cut that angle all the way along that board. And again the reason for this is to get a nice tight seal when the door of the roof is closed. One of many tea breaks. Being an Englishman, I break down without regular cups of tea. <laughs> Lemon and ginger is my favorite. So with the lowest board on the front, I've left a 20 centimeter gap for the entrance.
And now I'm using my multi-tool again to extend that gap upwards so it's also about 20 centimeters high. If this was for guinea pigs, you could probably make it a bit smaller. And for poultry, you definitely need it to be a bit bigger. But then the whole tractor would have to be a bit bigger as well. And now I'm making the door to fit into that space. I'm just using some scrap pieces of board that were left over. The design will soon become evident. And finally, we have two more butt hinges, this time very small in size. Always try and buy stainless steel hinges if you can, as they don't rust outside. This is going to be both a handle and a way to attach a magnetic strip to hold the door open and prevent strong winds blowing it closed, which was a problem I had with the first rabbit tractor I built. and a bolt for keeping my rabbits in at night. Now for a really fun part, fitting the wheels. You will need two bolts 15 centimeters long, four nuts and four washers. So I'm drilling out the holes in the center of the timber. And the alignment is already such that the bottom of the wheels are level with the bottom of the tractor. That's really important if you want it to work properly when you're moving it around. So make sure you get that right. The order is bolt, wheel, washer, nut, timber, washer, nut. So the two nuts are tightening onto the piece of timber. Now for the ramp, which is also great fun. Use an offcut of your one inch board. 
And don't make the angle too steep. That's another mistake I made with the first tractor. Or you'll find that baby rabbits just kind of leap out rather than climbing down in an orderly manner. And using another nifty feature of miter saws, which allows me to rotate the blade in order to miter the entire edge of a piece of timber. Next, I'm gonna cut ridges or steps in the ramp. So the rabbits, especially baby rabbits, can grip it with their claws when going up and down. And the technique here is to cut about a third of the way through. So you do need a steady hand for this, um, two blades thick. I believe I'm using 50 millimeter screws for this part so they don't stick through the other side. And now for the roof. This is galvanized corrugated steel. And you can buy it in all manner of lengths from builders' suppliers. Here I have a piece that's about uh, 60 centimetres wide and about 120 centimetres long, which I'm going to cut in half using my angle grinder. And that's my current volunteer, Paul, in the background, by the way. Now I didn't have an angle grinder when making the first rabbit tractor here, so I just used a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. You could also use a hacksaw, uh, but if you have one then an angle grinder will give you a cleaner cut. So now I'm overlapping the two pieces and positioning them with about five centimetres around the edges. tech screws with a rubber seal to prevent any water running in. If you use regular screws on a metal roof, you'll almost certainly have very wet bunnies before long. And I would really recommend using galvanized steel for roofing rather than the traditional uh, roofing felt that you often see on animal enclosures, which degrades and leaks. Um, it's just not fit for purpose in my view. Galvanized steel will easily last a decade or more without rusting, uh, and it's only slightly more costly. I'm just grinding the corners to get rid of any pointy bits that might stick in people's arms. And this is the plastic coated wire mesh, also known as hardware cloth in, in some countries, I think. Two millimeter thick wire, much better grade than chicken wire. You definitely don't want to put chicken wire on something like this uh, if you want to keep those predators out. One of the bad things about rabbits is that they will chew any timber with exposed edges. And I learned that the hard way. It really pays to cover all those exposed edges with strips of wire mesh before you cover the walls. So that's what I'm doing here. And you can see the end result, a chew-proof rabbit tractor that will last much longer. Now I'm putting the walls on, having cut the wire mesh to size already. I'm using galvanized fence post staples for this. If you have an air-powered staple gun, then that would certainly make this job a lot quicker. I don't, unfortunately.
cutting the windows and making sure they're very well secured. Lots of staples going in there. Attaching one final latch to hold down the roof. And a few finishing touches, a water bottle, which you can get in pet stores, straw for the hutch. And one very lovely rabbit who really likes having his ears massaged. and he'll be moved onto fresh grass every morning. So there you have it, one really solid predator-proof rabbit tractor and two very curious kittens, one in the background climbing that tree. The build time for this was about two days. I've made a few though, it might take you longer if you're doing it for the first time. The cost to make, uh, about $100. It's, it's a bit more than that in Ireland because materials are expensive here. Uh, most of the cost being the timber, which is really solid stuff, and the wire mesh, which is pretty uh, high grade, good quality as well. But I think something like this would retail for probably three times that, um, and that's without the wheels. And the wheels are so easy to add and make life so much easier when moving this thing around, so it's well worth it. If you've got a bit of DIY knowledge um, and a few tools, then constructing one of these really isn't that hard um, and absolutely worth doing, I think. Don't forget as well, you can adjust the size to suit the needs of the animals that you intend to keep in there, uh, be they rabbits, guinea pigs, um, or poultry, chickens, that would work too. Thanks for watching, especially to all my new subscribers and supporters. Until the next video from me, from Rumford, Griselda, and Fossick the rabbit who's in there somewhere, Bye for now. Yeah, you're really interested in that, aren't you? Don't you go hunting those rabbits. They're a lot bigger than you are.